Welcome to the ISO Show, dispelling myths and sharing tips for success to improve your business with ISO standards with your host, Mel Blackmore. Hi, and welcome to the ISO Show. I hope you're bearing up as we approach week eight of the coronavirus lockdown. Thankfully, we've officially passed the so-called peak and our government are now asking us to stay alert as opposed to stay at home. So whilst many businesses have adapted to remote working, in some industries such as manufacturing or construction, it's only now that they're actually looking at returning to work and to try and resume some kind of business as usual, although we all know it's not quite going to be the same, is it? But one standard that is completely focused on resuming operations to get back to business as usual is ISO 22301, the Business Continuity Standard. And this standard is very much about minimising damage to a business and planning for business recovery as swiftly as possible. Thanks to some of our ISO show listeners, I've had a few requests to record a podcast on this particular standard. So thanks very much for that feedback and please do keep any suggestions or comments coming through either by email or on one of the podcast players where you can leave comments. But I thought rather than just doing an introduction to the standard, as business recovery is such an important topic right now, I'm going to be touching on this subject several times over the next month or so. So future podcasts will cover the standard in more detail in our ISO 22301 Steps to Success three-part series with Rachel Churchman. And I'll also be interviewing a company that's invoked their 22301 response plans during the outbreak of the virus so that they can share with you firsthand their experience and lessons learned. And for those of you that are already familiar with ISO 22301 2012, the old version of the standard, Rachel Churchman will be taking you through the latest version and the changes of the 2019 version that was just published fairly recently. So to kick off with our Resilience series of podcasts, I'm going to begin by just giving a brief intro to the standard and some of the main benefits. The official title of BSEN ISO 22301 2019, and that's a mouthful in itself, is actually Security and Resilience. Business Continuity Management Systems Requirements. A couple of key words there, resilience, and also, because there are actually a series of resilience standards now, and also requirements. So what that means is, because requirements are included within the title, it means that it can be a certifiable standard. And many organisations across the globe are currently certified to ISO 22301 and the 2012 version. So they've basically got three years to migrate to the new version of the standard. But the original version was actually a British standard, BS25999. But following various global incidents, including 9-11 and the last recession, it was actually adopted as an international, an ISO, standard in 2012. There is another standard worth taking a note of, which is called ISO 22313. That's ISO 22313. Now this is linked to 22301, you might get a bit of a clue in the numbering there, but basically 22313 provides handy guidance on business continuity, but because it's simply a guidance document, it's not a certifiable standard, unlike ISO 22301. A link to further information on both of those standards will be provided in the show notes on our website, which is www.blackmoresuk. So what is business continuity management? Business continuity management involves the recovery or continuation of business activities in the event of a business disruption. And that can be any type of business disruption. COVID-19 is a prime example of a situation that is pretty much affecting all businesses globally right now. Businesses in 2020 have never been faced with such a threat and disruption to their day-to-day operations. So establishing robust business continuity management will help to respond to any potential disruption, both at the current time, but also it's essential for organisations in the future as well. By having a holistic business continuity management system in place, and that's known as a BCMS, it will not only help your organisation to recover from disasters, 
but it will also help to prevent reputational damage that can arise from any operational outages, any missed deadlines, or upset clients, or any potential direct financial loss. ISO 22301 provides a comprehensive set of controls based on business continuity best practice from across the world. And as far as I'm aware, there have been at least 34 countries that have been involved in the development of the standard. So it is truly an international standard. And it defines the strategic aspects and also the tactical capability of an organisation to plan for and to respond to business disruptions in order to minimise the negative impact of the situation that you may face in running your business. Now a lot of people think of the negative aspects and rightly so because that's the vast majority of incidents when a BCP would be invoked but not many think about the situations where you have got a significant workload in place. So for example PPE organisations that are actually producing the goods, so manufacturing plants that are dealing with the exponential demand for such products. So you might need business continuity controls in order to be able to mitigate risk and to bring in extra supplies and resources in that sort of situation as well, because that can have an impact on your business operations. The BCMS should include a number of different documents. However, there are two key documents that I'd like to highlight today. The risk assessment, which will be unlike any other risk assessment you have within your firm, and the business impact analysis, that's a BIA, which are an inherent part of 22301 and an essential component to identifying prioritised activities, also the dependencies on those activities, and resources supporting your key products and services. And that's also in addition to the impact of their failure and what that could have on the organisation. Now what I'd like to do for our ISO show listeners is to provide you with a free template for business impact analysis. So all you need to do is go into the show notes to find out how you can get access to that or just drop us an email at inquiries at blackmoresuk.com and can send you a free copy of that business impact analysis template over to you. So what are the benefits of ISO 22301? Well, there are various benefits involved, but I'd just like to break this down into four key areas. Because I think at the end of the day, you know, business continuity planning isn't something that's the top of everybody's agenda, usually. It's usually at the bottom. And that's because there is an investment of time and effort and energy involved with really getting to understand your business processes and risks and to put measures in place to mitigate risks and financial losses. So I think it's worthwhile looking at what the potential benefits are so you can see what your return on investment is likely to be. So the four areas I'd like to touch on today is the protection and recovery of business critical functions and processes, the financial benefits, reputational benefits, and also another benefit is demonstrating leadership commitment to resilience to all your stakeholders. So on the first one then, the protection and recovery of business critical functions and processes, one of the key benefits is that you get to understand and identify your most valuable and critical business processes and the impact of the disruption to them as well on the organisation. It will help you to have a timely and orderly responses all ready to go if you have an incident and how you can then best deal with business interruptions to continue business operations at an acceptable predefined level. Now you might define what that level is or it may be down to contracts that you've got in place service level agreements with your clients it also helps you to demonstrate credible responses through scenario based exercises so a typical one is a power outage loss of telecoms or not being able to access a building all of these things can easily be tested and that helps you to be better equipped for when it does actually happen in real life So therefore, it helps to increase the survival of your business and the chances, not just for the organisation, but also we're looking at employees' jobs that are at stake here and also their dependents as well. So there is definitely a better chance of survival if you've got a BCP in place. So it's basically increasing your level of resilience as an organisation and your recovery capability. The second key benefit is financial So we've seen firsthand 
organisations that have suffered by not being prepared. And we've also seen examples of businesses that have been fully prepared and they've managed to recover extremely quickly and recover the minimal amount of costs that has resulted disruption to their business. But one of the things that a lot of businesses don't think about is the fact that you will improve your risk profile as an organisation. So this is viewed very positively from an insurance broker, an underwriter. So when you're reviewing your insurance policy, quite often this can result in reducing your insurance costs. And it goes without saying that you can reduce the financial impact of incidents. And one of the things that the BIA does is helps you to capture what the potential cost of the disruption is to your business. So in a law firm, for example, where Blackmores have implemented this standard, we can calculate the financial costs by the hour, by the minute. And finally, it can help you to provide evidence to support any financial claims So whether that be for taxation, you know, there are taxation holidays at the moment, mortgage holidays, financial claims that can be applied for from local governments as well. So all of those key kind of areas that you can claw money back from, you know, it's important that you've got evidence of compliance on how you're being as resilient as you possibly can be to mitigate risks and make the most of those claims. And also reputational damage. One of the benefits is it can help you to reduce reputational damage. We've also seen some organisations having a competitive advantage as well. So for those organisations that are less resilient, that can have a devastating effect on their reputation. But for those that have got robust business continuity management systems in place, or even certified ISO 22301, it can give you quite a significant competitive advantage for your existing clients and, you know, the loyal clients that you've got in place at the moment, but also for attracting prospective clients as well, because you can prove to them that you are extremely resilient and you'll always be there for them. So it can help to maintain your reputation or even improve your reputation through demonstrating a professional approach to managing disruptions. It also sends a really positive message to other stakeholders in a crisis. So that could be, you know, shareholders, it could be the media and various other stakeholders as well. And finally, the other benefit is it's predominantly around the internal benefits, really, about demonstrating leadership commitment to resilience. So it helps you to demonstrate an overall risk management strategy and also the operational risk management controls. So it can help encourage clear communications on what employees need to do to recover from an incident. And this can also help communications across cross, sorry, that wasn't very good at use of language, but it can help to support cross-departmental and also cross-organisational coordination in times of difficulties. And finally, it can help with compliance with the expectations of regulators, insurers and business partners and other key stakeholders. So I noticed on the news yesterday, the head of the HSC, the health and safety executive in the UK, was in the press conference and they were talking about potential fines and incidents. So, you know, if you've got a robust getting back to business safely plan in place, and you've got all the controls and measures in place, and you've done risk assessments against that, that can help to satisfy regulators such as the HSE. And in some sectors, having those controls in place are a requirement. So in the IT sector, for example, we know that business continuity plans for certain organisations is a must-have when it comes to getting competitive insurance quotes. So there's some of the benefits. There are many more, but hopefully I've touched on the main ones. So finally then, what are the options when it comes to improving business resilience during COVID-19 and also other business disruptors that your company may face in the future. Well, there are four key things that you could consider. One is to buy a copy of 22301 2019, which is available online, and to review your business yourself, so doing it yourself, internally against the key requirements of the standard, and then moving on from that, developing a business continuity management system accordingly. A second option could be to partner with a business continuity specialist, such as Blackmores, and work in collaboration with your partner to complete a gap analysis so you can see clearly where you're at in relation to compliance with a best practice framework for business continuity. 
I may need help with doing that risk assessment or facilitating the business impact analysis across all of your key functions. You might need assistance from a partner with creating certain business continuity documentation and also potentially a compliance audit if you want to verify compliance as well with the standard. A third option is to partner with a training provider. So that would be to provide more knowledge you know, internally within your team, so bringing the subject in-house. And this could be through e-learning, it could be BCP workshops, which again, I can be delivered online. Or certification body auditor training if you wanted to have other technical qualifications on the standard as well. And then finally, the fourth option, if you're really serious about demonstrating how resilient you are as an organisation, then you should be considering certification to ISO 22301. And of course, I'd only recommend going with a UCAS accredited certification body, because as we know, there are some cowboys out there, so... I'll be providing a link to the UCAS accredited certification bodies on the show notes here. So basically they're approved by the government. So I hope this summary of business continuity management and benefits have whet your appetite for further information on the subject. But as I mentioned earlier, we've got more to come. So we've got the 22301 Steps of Success series coming up in which we'll explain step by step how to implement a business continuity management system compliant with 22301 and that'll be with Rachel Churchman and we'll also have an interview with a 22301 client to share their resilience journey over the last few months so that'll be an interesting conversation but until then I look forward to catching up with you on the next ISO show thanks for listening Looking to use ISO standards to drive better business practice? Contact us at blackmoresuk.com to access further information and book your free 15-minute call.